Go. Okay, I wanna welcome everybody to the Resident and Family Support Council meeting um, that is sponsored by the Illinois Long-Term Care Ombudsman Program. I'm Lee Moriarty and I'm the Deputy State Long-Term Care Ombudsman. Um, we've been having these meetings um, for almost three years now, which is amazing that we've been doing them. We started off doing them every other week and then we went to doing them two times a month um, because it got complicated when it came to every other week. And when it fell on, if there were three Tuesdays or four Tuesdays or five Tuesdays in a month, it kind of made things a little messed up for people. So we were getting a lot of emails from people saying, where's the meeting? And it wasn't happening that week. It was happening the following week. So that's where we pushed them back to the second and the fourth Tuesday of every month. Um, the reason why I'm sharing that with you is we're actually going to be sending a survey out to all of you um, after this meeting because we want to get your opinion about the frequency of these meetings, the content of these meetings, and anything else um, that you can share with us in regards to these meetings. Um, we have heard from so many people how important these meetings are and just looking at some of the views that we get on YouTube, um, we know that even after these meetings, they still are important for people because people are going back to them. Um, some of our uh, meetings have gotten over 400 views. Um, so that's really exciting that the information that we were talking about during these meetings is important to people. And that's reassuring to know that people want to be empowered. Um, people want to be empowered with information information as they're journeying down this long-term care path. Um, it's really difficult and can be very, very confusing for people. We know that people's worlds change drastically when they are um, enter into long-term care. And that's one reason why we wanted to have this topic today. We hear from families and residents, you know, the holidays can be a hard time. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that we talk about this and we could talk about what the holidays really can look like for people when they live in long-term care. So today we're going to be talking about visiting with your loved one during the holidays and idea ideas of things to make your visits more engaging. And with that, we're going to really be talking about just how all visits, not just during the holidays, but how any visit can be more engaging for, um, for when you go to visit somebody that lives in long-term care. You know, sometimes when you go to visit somebody, it can become very um, uh, mundane and almost feel like you're quizzing the person all the time because you're asking them all these questions. How are you feeling? Well, obviously, they're not feeling so well because they are in a nursing home or they're advancing their care needs or living in an assisted living. Um, wherever they may be, they may not be feeling so great. Um, so that becomes a very negative conversation. Um, we ask people how the food was, what have they been doing? We start to quiz people all the time instead of just engaging in life with people. So that's why we wanted to have this conversation today to make it less about interrogation of people when we go to visit them and make it more about being together and treasuring the moments that we have with um, with our loved ones when we're visiting. So, you know, when it comes to looking at what these visits should really be like for people, it really should be personalized for what was what is important to the person, to the individual. This is really where that person-directed living really comes in really strongly. What should what could those how what did the holidays look like for the individual before they even came into long-term care? How did they spend their days? How did they spend their holidays? Um, so start thinking about what that looked like for the individual and try to give that back to them. Um, so many people feel a sense of loss when they enter into long-term care. And so this is a way of having them feel, again, rejuvenated and connected to, to their lives and what their world should be about them and how they want to spend their day. Um, so it's also important when we're looking at this that just because the person may have done that in their past doesn't necessarily mean that that's what they want to do as well. Sometimes the pressures from families, <clears throat> excuse me, the pressures from just society can really get in the way for what people really want. Um, so that's part of what that conversation should be looking like too. <clears throat> I remember hearing years ago from a family member, I'm saying, well, my mother, you know, she cooked every day. She cooked all the time. So she loves cooking. 
And then when I went to go talk to the resident, I asked her about cooking. And she said, oh, my gosh, I'm so glad I'm done with that. I don't want anything to do with that anymore. I had to cook every day. I had to cook all the meals. It just was such a burden for me. And it's so nice to not have to be doing that anymore to have someone else cook for me. So using that little that lady's head in my you know, that lady's words in my head, it's really taken me to what I know I need to be doing. We just because people um, may have been doing things doesn't necessarily mean that they wanted to do those things either. So when it comes to the holidays, think about that. Um, how did the person spend their holidays? But also, is that really how they wanted to spend their holidays as well? Um, so for many, there's really value um, in being with friends and families. When you think about it, I mean, if you look at the commercials, right? The commercials show all these people gathering together around the big table and sharing in their food and just a lot of conversation and a lot of laughter and a lot of busyness going on. Um, and that's what we think that everybody wants, but that's not the reality of it. Not everybody wants that for their holiday celebration. For some, they may find value in that solace and that reflection of the holiday instead. So it may be more of the ritual of the, of the celebration of what that holiday is really all about and the quietness that that holiday can bring instead of the busyness and the rushness that, um, that many of us picture when we think about the holidays. So I want you to remember this as well. I'm also thinking about this. Things can change as we get older. I know the older I get, the less I'm all about getting the shopping done and going to celebrate with friends here and family there and more friends over here and more family over there. I, it's, it, things just change for me as I'm getting older. Karen, I see you've got your hand raised. Did you want to add something? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. We can hear you. Um, I write this because I recently went to a friend's father's funeral. And I remember when my father passed away that first year of holidays um, and special family occasions was so incredibly rough. The empty chair, mm -hmm. um, the, the role reversals of who was going to take on things that my father had done. Um, and it was really hard for my mom who had been married for 40 plus years. Um, and my brothers really didn't understand why she wanted to drop some things. And I just think it's because she didn't have the emotional resilience, um, mm -hmm. to face that. And so I wanted to put it out that while some people are, um, engaged in solace and reflection, some people are just really sad and depressed and they don't know how to communicate that um I know my parents were older when I was born and they were very much the stiff upper lip keep everything private mm -hmm. um and that was kind of hard for me to understand until after both my parents were gone it wasn't that they didn't feel things they just didn't share things and that is such a generational thing, you know? I mean, it does feel like I know um, my mother's generation, my mom just turned 90 this summer. And it is, I feel like the younger, uh, as our population, as our ages get younger and younger, we're getting a little bit more comfortable in doing that sharing um, because it's so encouraged. You know, many people uh, talk to their therapists, many people talk to their friends about things that my mother would never talk to anybody about. And so I think your, your, you know, what your, your words that you're sharing are really important for us to remember um, that this can also be a very sad time of year for people as well um the missing those people that we love and being able and not just discounting it but letting them have that opportunity to reflect and to be able to talk and give them the opportunity to do it and let them then choose whether or not they want to do that or they don't want to do that that was very mindful of you Karen to um to be astute and aware. And I hope your brothers appreciated that you were there to help kind of pull it a little back so that your mother could um, still be able to celebrate that holidays the way she wanted to celebrate the holidays, even though it might mean changing things. You know, I'm always going to be the little sister. We haven't outgrown that dynamic yet. <laughs> 
Very true. Very, it doesn't matter how old we are, right? And sometimes they don't want to listen to the little sister. I'm the middle sister. And sometimes the older sister um, doesn't want to listen to me either. So believe me, I understand. One time she turned to me and said, you're starting to act like the big sister. And I'm not liking that. <laughs> so I get where you're coming from. Um, and keeping everything that we're saying in mind, you know, really personalizing that holiday for the individual and what that can be for people. So, you know, think about how, it, especially if somebody is going through some emotions, um, don't bring it to, it doesn't always have to be about how are you feeling? Are you missing, you know, oh my goodness, you know, this is a sad time of year because we're missing our loved one. Um, try, you can sometimes, a little distraction can be helpful and can be very therapeutic as well. And sometimes that can happen through doing, doing something, doing something different. Bring the cookbook in. You know, you see a picture up here on the screen of the Betty Crocker cookbook. I had the yellow version when I got married. I got the yellow version. I don't even know if anybody uses a cookbook that much anymore because they Google a lot of the recipes. Um, or they're being shared through emails and text with people now. But bring in that old Betty Crocker's cookbook of your mother's, of your aunt's. Um, bring it in and page through that. You're going to see that some of them have been folded down. Some of the pages are out of order because those were their favorite recipes. And talk about that. Talk about the recipes. Talk about the cookbook. The memories just even seeing that cookbook can even bring to you. Another thing to think about doing when you go to visit an individual during the holidays is to do Christmas cards together. Um, like I said, my mother is 90. And at 90 years old, my mother was really proud. Um, about a week after Thanksgiving, she said to me, and I already have my Christmas cards done. And she was so proud of herself that she was doing those because this is the one time of year where she does connect with some of her long lost friends. Um, and at 90, many of those friends are lost. Um, but now it's interesting because she's kept that tradition going for so long that she hears from a lot of her friends' children. And they update them on either how their mother is doing, how their father is doing, or that they've gone, that they've passed away, and sharing in some of the memories. So it's really been very, um, it's kind of cathartic for my mother to be able to sit and write those cards. And she handwrites every card and she writes a note in every card. So you can bring some cards in. And you know, no matter what, what holiday you celebrate, it can just be that time of year to connect. Um, <clears throat> sit down with a cup of coffee, with a cup of tea, some cookies, and pull out the cards and together send some cards. It might be something nice and reflective to be able to do. Um, and again, we also think around the holiday times as being about food. And many holiday, um, different cultures celebrate their holidays, and food is a central piece. Um, we've got Hanukkah, where there's a lot of food-oriented, different rituals that happen, as well as Kwanzaa. Um, many food rituals happen with that as well. Food represents different things. Um, and bringing, those, that, bringing that back to the individual and having them explain the history in their voice. And this may be an opportunity to have to videotape that for future generations so they can hear it from the elder in the family, the traditions that the family had and the relationship with what those different foods symbolized. So this could be a way of that increasing that connectivity for future generations as well. Another thing that you can do is decorate your loved one's room for the holidays. Now, this particular scene that's up on the screen may be a little bit overboard with the paper fireplace and the tree. We may not be able to put all of that in an individual's room, but think about what you can do. I had a girlfriend who actually, for every holiday, from Groundhog Day to Christmas, my girlfriend decorated her mother's room, the assisted living that she lived in, decorated the door, decorated her whole apartment. And that was something that they enjoyed doing together. Um, many times they'd even be making a wreath together to be able to hang it on her front door. So that when her mother got the compliments, her mother could feel proud that she did it with her daughter. Um, so think about those types of things. If you've got little ones, bring the little ones there to help do the paper strings for the tree, um, be able to cut out ornaments, be able to help in the hanging of the decorations in the, in the individual's room. That will help bring a cheer to them. Um, I know to me, um, I have to say probably the decorations is one of the most important things for me during the holidays. It's really not all the decorations, but it's that lights. I love to have the holiday lights going. 
and sit in my living room with just the holiday lights on and with my tea and I'm a big tea drinker and just sit there and have some holiday music going my feet up and just relaxing and listening to the music and I feel at peace to me that is such a great way for me to get connected to the holidays so think about those opportunities to be able to provide that for your loved one as well um, but like I said before, that you know these meaningful visits should not just be limited to the holidays. Um, and so here are some other ideas that you can do anytime with your loved one. Um, as I keep saying, really look at the interests that your loved ones used to do, and then really try to incorporate that into your visit as you're able. Um, I have so many friends now that are reaching out to me, um, knowing what it is that I've done for a career path, working in long-term care. Um, and now that as their loved ones are entering into long-term care, they they just don't know what to do. They're like, my father's depressed. He's moved into a nursing home and he just sits there all day long and does nothing. So my very first question is, what did he do at home? What was he doing at home? And they're, usually they're like, well, right before he got here, he wasn't really doing anything either. Like, well, what, what did he do? In, in the past, when he was busier doing things, what was, give me some ideas of things that he liked to do. And then taking those ideas and helping to incorporate that into his life a little bit more. Um, hearing that, well, he always did the daily crossword puzzle. And then he stopped doing it because they just got a little too hard for him. Or he couldn't see them as easily. Saying, well, why don't you bring the crossword puzzle in and do it together? Um, you know, and be able to give him the clues, tell him the words. If you have a blackboard, even draw that out for how many letters are in the word with the connecting letters in there so they can see the connecting letters. Because sometimes those crossword puzzles can be too little, but there's also big crossword puzzles for people that have low vision. Can find that sometimes those bigger um, crossword puzzles can be a little bit less adult-like. Um, so sometimes people don't respond to that as well. So take what it is and adapt. Adapt what might be best for your loved one. The bigger ones might be good for people that may be experiencing some cognitive issues, but still want that challenge of being able to do a crossword puzzle. Um, but for the person who is still more cognitively intact, doing the, the, the Wall Street Journal crossword puzzle can still be can still be a good experience for them as long as you take it and you adapt the way that that gets done. Um, so think about what life used to look like um, if they used to garden? Well, how can you have that still happen? Um, can you, is there an opportunity to be able to garden at the community? Even if it's just, if they don't have raised beds, if the individual can't bend down um, like they used to, you can even have them help point out to where things can be. And you can talk to the to the um, the long-term care community and say, you know, hey, my dad used to like to garden and We'd love to be able to bring some plants in. I, you know, I'd like to be able to, uh, I, it's on me because he always did this every year. I'd like to be able to go and buy some plants and some flowers and be able to plant them. Is there a place that we can do this together, my father and I, um, so that we, he can, and he can show me where the plants should go and should they go in light? Should they go in shade? Should they go in filtered light? And he can be able to help water them every day um, and be able to have that back. So like I said, I, those are the important things. Um, as my, one of the things that I hear more and more from people as they're aging is one of the reasons why so many people give up is because they lost their, um, their purpose. They don't have a purpose anymore. They feel like I have, I have no purpose on this planet and I want to be able to have that. Um, so think about how you can give some purpose back to people and look at what they used to do and try to connect it to that. Another thing to do is to use the activity calendar to plan your visit. When my grandmother um, first entered into a long-term care community, my mother was challenged with what to do. Um, I'm a recreation therapist by trade. So my mother reached out to me. It was like, what do I do with grandma? When I go to visit her, I'm not really sure what to do. We just sit there all day long and it becomes into a complaining session because I keep asking her and I don't mean to, but I keep asking her, how are you feeling? She obviously isn't feeling so well. She lives in a long-term care community community. And then she starts on this complaint rant and we start going down that path and it makes the visit, I think, more stressful for her as well as for myself. So I was like, mom, go to the activity calendar with her and say, hey, I'm coming tomorrow. Is there something on this calendar that you'd like to do? Um, or 
if you, you know you're going to get the no from them, say, you know, I I haven't played bingo in a long time and I'd love to try to play some bingo. Could we play bingo together? Or they're doing a travel log. You know what? Why don't we go to that tomorrow? I'll come tomorrow and I'll bring you to it. Or if there's a craft, you know, saying, you know, I would really like to be able to have some decorations to be able to hang in my house. I'd love to be able to do the craft. Mom, let's go to that tomorrow and putting it in that direction. Sometimes when we ask the yes, no questions, we're going to get a no. So you can start with the, how about let's do this so that you don't get it more of that yes, no, or I would really like to try this. So let's go together and see if that can change the way some of that conversation can happen. Um, and so think about is, even if it's just of interest to you, they might be interested in it because you're interested in it. Um, and, you know, like my mother used to wound up travelogue was something my mother loved to do. My mother loved to travel. And so as my um, grandmother was aging, my, they would go to travelogue every single solitary week. My mother would bring her a cup of coffee and they would go ahead and they would have a cup of coffee together, go to travelogue and go on a trip together. And it gave them stuff to talk about afterwards. It made my mother then start bringing in pictures from her trip. And it really changed the visits from my grandmother and my mother. So I wanna encourage that to happen as well. Um, another thing is the activity departments are there and they have a multitude of supplies. And they're looking for stuff that has meaning and value for your, for the people that you love as well. So don't hesitate in asking the activity department for any supplies that they may have. They have cards, they have games, papers, pens. Uh, many times they'll have writing paper and things like that. And <clears throat> they also will probably get some of the supplies that you might want as well because they write goals for your resident. So if they're writing goals and this can help them achieve their goals, you're, you're helping them along as well. So don't hesitate to talk to the activity department about this as well and get their input and help reach out to them for some supplies. Another thing is bringing in any pets or any children or grandchildren. Think about that. Um, I recently had a girlfriend reach out to me and said that her son was going to visit her mother with his baby. So this would be the grandchild going to visit with the great grandchild um, to go visit her mother in the assisted living that her mother lived in. And they were all kind of dreading it um, because the grandmother didn't know what she was going to do with this baby um, coming to visit and wanted to make sure that she was going to have an enjoyable time. She's two years old um, and she just didn't know what to do. And the grandson was a little worried um, that the grand the grandchild would get a little bored and they weren't really sure the great grandchild, you know, how this visit was all going to go. So I just started offering out some suggestions to her. I was like, you know, well, could your mother and you um, the day before even hide some things in the room, go to the dollar store and buy some little toys um, and hide them around in her apartment. And then you could send the baby um, to go around and try to find those little toys um, so that it might be like a little scavenger hunt for her. And your mother can do hot, cold as she's getting to the items. So it might make it really fun and engaging for them or color together. I do. I just did that over the weekend with my granddaughter. She loves to color. So she always wants to color with her Mimi. And that's something that, you know, we were able to do together this weekend. And we had so much fun coloring. Um, I brought I brought her a holiday Santa Claus coloring book. And the two of us sat there for hours and colored and just talked and just sat together. So, you know, that's when some of those childlike activities can be extremely appropriate because you're doing it with the children. I'm bringing the pet. Go for a walk. Take the pet for a walk around the block. Even if it's a little cold out there, don't worry. Bundle up. Bring scarves, gloves, hats. Go out there. If that's something that is important to your loved one, to be able to be with an animal, be with a pet, go ahead and do that. Bring the pet to visit your loved one. And I'm guaranteeing that you're going to get smiles from a lot of other people as well. Um, when you bring in children and pets, many other people in the community will also be smiling and happy. It brings puts a smile on their face. Um, the one thing that you do want to make sure if you bring an animal in is that they're up to date with their shots and, the immune, and their immunizations. Um, I would even bring them with me just in case so that if anybody questioned, you can say, well, I have the paperwork right here that shows that they're all up to date on their shots. That way, then you know you're not running into any snafus along the way and bringing the, um, bringing the pet to the community. 
Um, also, one of the things that you can do is help provide that stimulation for your loved one, if they're ha especially if they're having any cognitive issues, um, being able to mark off the days on the calendar um, and encouraging your loved one to do the same thing, circling it on the calendar when people are going to come and visit or when special things are going on, um, if there's entertainment going on in the nursing home, and having that be something that they can reflect on and kind of start to plan their days, get them to start thinking about the days ahead and things to look forward to in life, that meaning and purpose, things that they can start looking forward to, can be some ideas on how to give people that stimulation and that happiness into their world. Some other ideas, I already mentioned that cookbook idea, but you can take this in even deeper. What you can do is you can talk about a particular recipe that they um, where that was their special recipe or ask them what was their one recipe you loved to cook um, and talk about do they remember the, what was in it um, what goes into the recipe talk about the aromas how it made them feel um, to be able to uh, just taste that the expression that was on their other uh, families faces when they made those um, when they made that special recipe that everybody loved um, and then one of the things that you can also do is even see if the nursing home or the assisted living, um, if you can make that there. Um, one of the things I did suggest to my girlfriend who was talking about her grandson and the great baby, great grandbaby coming to visit is I said, you know, they could even make, she has a microwave in her room. I said, you can even make something together. Like you can make Rice Krispie treats. And that's so much fun for a little kid putting the marshmallows into the pan. And when you put it in the microwave, having her watch how they blow up, it's just giggles and laughters for everybody. And then it's just such an easy thing that you can make and you can really enjoy them right away too. So think about that cooking even with your loved one and how that can help to inspire some happiness in their lives. Bring in newspapers or magazines. Go and get that magazine at the end of the aisle at the checkout stand in the grocery store that you've been wanting to get. Pull that People magazine out and pull it out and start talking about the movie stars or glamour do's and glamour, glamour dotes. Um, read the Dear Abby. Read the horoscopes. Um, talk about the weather. Talk about what's going on in the news. Um, and it doesn't have to be all happy things. You can talk about other things that are going on in the news as well. Um, because, you know, we, we don't necessarily have to hide the world from people. Let them understand what's going on. Um, have them to be able to have those cognitive conversations, adult conversations with you like they did in the past. Um, I know the Dear Abbeys can be a lot of fun to read. You could just even read it and say, now, what would be your advice? Now, let's see what Abby said, what her advice was. Um, so that can be a fun thing to do. Um, bring in picture albums and discuss and share those memories. Um, my mother has picture album after picture album after picture album. My mother liked to travel a lot when she first retired and she put together albums um, for everything that she did, every trip that she went on. And I don't even know if anybody's ever looked in those albums. And that would be the perfect opportunity to be able to pull those out and reminisce those trips and what they used to be. Karen, did you have something you wanted to yeah, share? Related to this, my family may be a little on the geeky side, but um, one of the ways my mom bonded when she was a young or uh, younger girl with some of her older relatives was over genealogy. Oh. And on my dad's side, who was an only child, he had elderly cousins um, and it was hard to come up with topics. So going over those photos, uh, getting them to reminisce and talk about the genealogy. It's fascinating, or I found it fascinating what all they knew, um, particularly in my family. They actually talked about when uh, they dropped German and started just speaking English um, because they were that, that old. Um, and, you know, like I actually have like one of my family's immigrant trunks. And, you know, talking about some of the stuff that, you know, particularly possessions that may have an interesting story. My brothers aren't interested, but like I have quite a few notes from my mom on like her wedding pattern for China and sterling silver and mm -hmm. some pieces like how they came into the family. So sometimes it's just, you know, kind of like a show and tell concept, mm -hmm. um, but any more um, people that are more computer savvy, 
uh, there can be some interesting things that you can get set up for people um, if they've got internet access doing genealogy. Um, and then you can come back and have them report back to you um, their research. That is a great idea, Karen. I really love that idea because that, again, it's a way of being able to share that history of the family, meaning and purpose. Um, and it's such a, my mother actually, again, um, my mother's aging really well, hence why she's 90 years old. She actually just wrote her memoir um, for her 90th birthday. And she went through and wrote out all the family history um, in narrative form and created a book that she gave to each of us on her 90th birthday. Um, which was a very, and then I took the book and I added in pictures that she had into the book. So it really reads like a real book. Um, and my daughter then had it bound, um, had it brought to a place where they bound it so that she actually wrote her memoir. Um, That's and that, so cool. It could also be fun, like for people to get together for a special occasion, an anniversary or birthday um, to do kind of like a spinoff of the old This Is Your Life show. Oh. And reach out to different people to put things together, either in recordings or clips. I'm a low tech girl, but uh, I know it can be done. And it could be fun for um, to bring in friends from like distances who can't travel themselves. And it could be delegated. And a lot of times people love doing that type of stuff. Oh, you, what, how much fun is that? That would really be great. I know during that pandemic, I had a couple of girlfriends' husbands reach out because they were having some milestone birthdays and um, asked for a little video from all of us. And I didn't even think about that as an idea to do as somebody's getting, you know, it, what a great idea. I love that idea. That's a really, really fun thing to do. I'm going to remember that actually for my mother next year. I think that she would absolutely positively love it. And we've got relatives all over the country that she would love to be able to hear from. And that would be a great way of being able to put it all together. So really good idea. Thank you for that, Karen. And that leads right to that memory book or scrapbook. You know, bring in that box of pictures. I don't know about you. I always tease um, that, and it's probably going to be the reality someday. I've got a big rubber made bin of pictures that I tried to go through and I just don't have time for it. It started off as a little box and they kept growing, growing, growing. And now it's huge. I'm not kidding. And so well, I always say, you know what? Someday when I need that hip replaced, that knee, knee replaced, I'm going into a rehab facility. I'm going to go into a skilled nursing facility for rehab and I'm bringing the big Rubbermaid box with me and I'm going to work on my scrapbooks and I'm going to get my books. I'm going to get my pictures organized and I'm going to start working on my scrapbooks um, because that is probably be the perfect opportunity for me to be able to just dedicate time to doing that while I'm focusing in on my rehab and being able to get back to me. So the corollary with that is if you've got uh, younger kids to buy the greeting cards that you can record messages Ooh. or the books and ask your loved one to you know read and make a recording of like a book or a greeting card so that it can be sent as a special gift from them to someone in their family or to a friend that they're particularly missing that is another really good idea. I really like that. We had when my grandfather, my great, he would have been my great grandfather at the time. And this is very, very long, long time ago because um, he died when he was in his 90s. But they had the ability to be able to make a record. And we have a record of his um, of him reciting a poem and to be able to hear my great grandfather's voice, who I knew for six months of my life. Um, was just always so special for the whole family. We'd always gather around the record player and it was all scratchy. Um, but to be able to hear his voice, it made it was my grandmother's father, and it would always bring a tear to her eye to be able to hear him reciting this poem. But what a what a thing to do to be able to have that voice live in history. And I love that idea of being able to do that. Really good idea, Karen. Thank you for those. Like those. Um, some other ideas right, right to is those videotapes of your loved one's memories. Record them. You know, we got that easy thing right now called our cell phones, that it's very, very easy for us to be able to pull that out and record them. Um, there are books out there that can help guide. You could probably do a Google search on some of those things that can help guide through um, those questions. Your favorite childhood memory. Tell me about your mother and your father. Tell me about the house that you lived in and have them just go on and record them. Um, that can be a really fun thing to be able to do for that family history as well. 
um, write letters. My mother loves to get a written note in the mail, a card, a letter, anything. It makes her feel so special. Um, and so have the, you know, have your loved ones sit with them, write letters, write letters with them, write letters for them, whatever it is that their ability is, and to keep them connected with friends and relatives. Um, my mother has, I had a girlfriend, I used to live in Connecticut years and years ago. We, I had my girlfriend that we were friends for two years. My mother and her mother were friends. My mother now and my girlfriend are pen pals, and they write to each other all the time. And she was in our lives for two Two years, but she still writes to my mother. Um, and every Christmas, I just got a card from her. Um, she sent me. She sends me a card um, with a beautiful note in there every year. And those are the things that just bring a big smile to your face when you have when you receive something like that. So encourage your loved one to do that to bring a smile to someone else's face. Um, you can also promote those intimate movements, um, moments, um, hand massages, doing their nails, brushing their teeth. Um, you know, these are things that caring. My girlfriend's mother said to her um, when she was sick, um, one of the things that my girlfriend's mother would do with her own mother when her mother was sick is she'd brush her hair. And that was that tender moment that she would do with her mother and brush her hair. And it was from the, their, their way that they showed love. And so then when my girlfriend's mother got sick, my girlfriend's mother turned to her and said, you never brush my hair. And that's what she wanted from her daughter. So my girlfriend started brushing her hair when she would go to see her and just spend that time in solace, just brushing her hair. And it would make my her mother feel so good. And those were such tender, loving moments that they had together. Um, that hand massages, um, doing those nails. My grandmother always wanted her fingernails done. And I used to always say, it's because she could look at that and it would make her feel pretty. That's what she could look at all day long. She could look at her hands and it always made her feel like she was living. It made her feel pretty. Um, she wasn't a big makeup person, but she liked to have her nails done. And so that's something to be able to do. Brushing teeth. You know, they don't get brushed that great sometimes in nursing homes. Um, so, you know, that can be another thing, that cleanliness, being able to feel good about yourself. These are all things that we can help generate as we're being with our loved ones, making people feel good about who they are. I'm taking your loved one out for lunch, going on outings, shopping, walks. What a great time of year to go to the mall. You know, just go to the mall and look at the kids lined up to see Santa Claus. Usually there's a carousel or something else going on. Um, walk around the mall, get yourself a pretzel, a bag of popcorn, a cup of coffee, sit and just watch the people hustling and bustling, do some window shopping, um, even do some real shopping. Uh, just enjoying that time, go out for lunch. One of the things that I would encourage is that you um, plan that out into some place that you've gone to before so that you know what to expect. A mall we, it's typically very accessible for people because um, there's a lot of strollers, wheelchairs, things like that. So you can usually have high success by going to a mall. Um, not all restaurants are going to be as successful being able to get in and getting out. So make sure that you make it as easy for the person and less frustrating for them as possible so that they want to continue to do it and they don't feel embarrassed or they don't feel they're putting other people out, those types of things. Um, and also try to plan a time when it's not too busy. My mother's hearing is really bad. And one of our favorite restaurants, she just turned to me two weeks ago and said, I don't know if we should be coming here anymore during the big breakfast hours or lunch hours because it's so loud in here. I'm having a hard time hearing you. Um, so well, I said, you know, we can always go for lunch at three o'clock, mom. I have no problem going for lunch at three o'clock. That's perfectly fine with me. So we're going to start altering if she wants to go to that restaurant. And those are the types of things to think about. Um, and then always make sure that you do let the nurses know that you're planning on taking the individual out in case that any medication needs to be given um, or um, so that they, everyone knows where they are. We did do a resident and family support council on this topic, on taking your loved ones out, um, and even on vacation. Um, and uh, that was one of our videos um, you can find on our YouTube channel. Um, so that if you're interested in, do in learning anything more on that, um, you can go to the YouTube channel and see that and listen to that because there was some really great advice for that. Um, and then also, you know, it doesn't always have to be about doing the fun things. It could also be doing those everyday things that we do. Do laundry together. 
you know, and ask if, they're, if the building has a public washers and dryers. I really encourage, that's a culture change nursing home that has washers and dryers in the um, community that people can use. And if they do, use them. Go there, do laundry together, relax, enjoy it. Enjoy the beautiful smell of fresh done laundry, that freshness smell, enjoy that. I already talked about some gardening, arranging flowers, just bring in a couple of bunches of flowers and bring in five bunches of those dollar flowers that you can get from Jewel and make flower arrangements. And then your loved one can give it to the nurse. She can give it to other residents that she might know, be able to put them on the table, maybe in the dining room. Um, you can even invite other people to help arrange those flowers with you. So it could be a fun thing to do, but also then like a way if they could give it back to people that are important to them as well. Um, clip coupons. Um, that's a generation of coupon clippers. Now, many of the people that live in the nursing homes right now um, or long-term care communities are coupon clippers. Um, there was an activity aid that I worked with in, in one of the long-term care communities um, back in my past. And what she was doing is she would have um, and this was on their memory care, is they clipped coupons a lot. The ladies loved it. They would start talking about some of the things that were in the ads that they'd never even heard about. Oh, look at this. You can buy this now. It's already pre-made meals. And they would start talking about some of the things. And the girl was telling them that she was helping them save money because she wanted to buy a car. So they were clipping the coupons for her. So sometimes she'd say, you know, I really could use some coupon for some soap and deodorant. So they would go purposely looking for those types of coupons for her. And then what she really did was she took those coupons and then she put them down in the staff break room for people, for the other staff to be able to share and indulge on the cl coupon clipping that the residents up in the memory care were doing. But she would always share with them. She's like, you guys have saved me $200 this month. She'd always just... And that therapeutic fibbing, I'm perfectly fine with because it made those women feel really, really pleased that they were helping this, this gal to be able to buy a car for herself. Um, so it was just a cute antidote. If the individual was a collector, collecting coins, stamps, and things like that, um, and being able to continue those collections or bring in their collections. Um, Karen, I can identify with you. I'm a bit of a geek myself. I've been a coin collector. I, my, I started collecting coins when I was a little kid. My father traveled a lot, so I was always looking for um, different coins. So I've got a bunch of penny. I got probably like four books of those penny books where you put the pennies in. Um, and that can be a fun thing to do. Just get one of those books, bring up your big thing of change that you got and start going through them and start filling them out. If you've got a little kid that, with you, they can enjoy that as well and start teaching them a little bit about being a collector and what that feels like to be a collector. Um, and then some other things just to think about when you're engaging with your loved one. You know, it doesn't just always have to be the two of you. Think about bringing it with more people together. You know, try to foster relationships between others that live in the community and your loved one. Um, how can you do that? You know, think about the table mates. Maybe and invite them to come and have a cup of coffee with you. Uh, I, I there was one um, building that I used to work with, and there was a, a white um, a daughter that would come every week, and she would go to the special bakery and buy a dozen of the pastries that the ladies loved, and she asked for coffee from the kitchen, and they would sit around. She had her mother and her table mates would sit there. It was outside of meal time, but she'd invite the table mates to come, and they find a nice little corner, and they go off and they'd sit, and they would just talk and just have a coffee clutch, just a very natural conversation and just sit and enjoy each other and learn about who each other is. Think about that. Think about these, you know, the individuals that are sitting at their tables together. Do they know about their past history? Do they know where they went to high school? Do they know where they grew up, where they were born? Nine times out of 10, you're going to start finding connections with people that live in these long-term care communities. And you never know, they may find out that they dated their cable mate's brother. You never know what you're going to find out. So think about that how we as family can help foster these relationships, not just with ourselves, but also with other people that live in the community. Join those current activities, but don't sit by yourself. Sit with a group of other people. Go ahead and sit, join that bingo and don't sit at a table in the back of the room with your mom. Go sit in the front of the room and sit with some other people at that table as well. 
uh, and encourage and introduce yourselves to people. Have your mother introduce themselves. Have them introduce themselves. That's something we don't do enough of in long-term care. When new people move into a long-term care community, we do not do enough of introducing people to each other. We should be doing more of that. So help be the catalyst for that. Help to be that person to develop those relationships from resident to resident so that people really start to feel that more and more that sense of community. And that's a really important thing that we can help do. I see Karen like that thing, that, that comment. So thanks, Karen. Yeah, I was going to say one thing that I've done and I've sent to friends who have young kids uh, is there's all sorts of places and I put it in the the chat that you can see like fairly good exhibits of museums and you can see like animal cams at zoos and some of that is really interesting and so like you could invite somebody uh to go on a on a virtual trip with you and you know get around a tablet and you know then you guys both had an outing without actually leaving fun Fun. That's that's a great idea. I see that we've got some ideas that people have started putting in the chat. And I'd love for some of you guys to open up your mic right now and share what some of those ideas are. Um, I see that um, Kay Garrity, you um, uh, <laughs> you like the color of Mimi. It's a great name for a TV show. Yeah, we'll have to do that. I think my, my granddaughter and I would enjoy that. <laughs> I like that. Um, I, could you open up your mic? Would you be interested in opening up your mic and talking more about the presentation that you've done on family photos in the senior living communities? Okay, there, I did it. Yay. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Oh, good. Um, well, what I did, you know, it, it kind of metamorphosized because um, I had been asked to go and present on a book I wrote about family photos and women's history. And I went to um, a senior living community and one, it was one of the staff that actually said, would you like the residents to bring their own photos? And I said, yeah, it'd be great. But what would be more powerful is if we could you know, present, show them in a large format so everyone can see them. Mm -hmm. So it was so simple, but we just had them email photos so that I could open up the emails on a laptop. I mean, we tried a bunch of different ways. This way worked best and project them on a screen. And then you had people telling stories about their mother who, who sewed corsets in a factory or, you know, uh, people that were, um, that ran little stores in their neighborhood. And, and um, sometimes women would, would uh, a woman posted a photo of a picture of her. Now she's in the assisted living place. So she's, I think she was 85 and she had a photo of her with her grandmother who in the photo was 99 or something. So it was a photo of her like, you know, 30 years ago. It was, it was just so amazing because they got so um, excited about being able to tell their stories and comments. People were getting up out of their chairs and pointing at the screen and saying, see here, this is such and such, you know, I mean, it was, it was really awesome. And we did it on um, the one I'm thinking of in particular was done on what they called a family day. So you had the multi-generational audience of the daughters, the sons were there, but it, if it was planned, you know, this uh -huh. one was not, this one kind of just happened. Um, it could be amazing. It could be amazing. Oh, it sounds like so much fun. You know, people used to like to, when they went on a trip, you know, they like to well, have their friends come on over and watch their slides. This sounds like so much more fun to be well, able have vacation photo slideshow. That that was more of a punishment than anything else. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> this so is this actually fun. fun. This is more fun. But people just loved it. So yeah, I think that I love when you were talking about the photos, I said, oh my God, because anybody could do this really if you have a room with any kind of a screen. I mean, easily done. You know? Absolutely. What a great idea. I truly love that idea. Yeah. And they, and, 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 you know, the thing is that sometimes even with memory loss, like I, I saw this with my own mom when she had, um, she, her health was failing and she would have the moods, you know, she would be, they're very, you know, get very upset about things that she couldn't do, couldn't remember. And I went into, and I was working on the book and I went into our own family archive which was boxes and things 
And I started pulling photos out just to see, hmm, can I use this one? Can I use this one? And she had a complete personality change. She walked into the bedroom. She sat down. She started looking at the pictures and 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 remembering things that had happened. Oh, this was when we were on the farm. And she said, that's Sonny Wanzel. He had a car with a rumble seat and you were in it. And I was like, really? Okay. So she had some great memories, but the images uh, percolate that. You know, and and mm -hmm. and they're almost always joyful. I've never had anybody be sad or say, "Oh, this is a terrible thing that happened." No, no, they always want to tell the good story. So I highly recommend it. I love that, and you know, I mean, because you think about it, we all pull our cameras out. We don't usually pull them out when we're in bad moods. We pull them out because we want to capture the memory. Right. So it's wonderful because you actually did capture the memory because years later, here your oh. mother was talking. You know. She was well, able, whoever took that picture captured the memory. And it yes, worked. yes, I highly recommend it. I just want to say right now, make sure you, if you have those old photos, scan them before they deteriorate. That's my commercial message to you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's and, all I've got. <laughs> and I did with my mother's, she had a lot of old pictures um, that we shared. Like one of the things that I learned as my mother was writing her memoir is on my father's side of the family, my um, parents were from Brooklyn, New York. And my father's side of the family, um, they had the first moving company in Brooklyn, New York. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So that's when, it, and we have a picture of the van, which was a horse drone carriage. Um, oh my God. Oh my God. With them by it, you know, which is very interesting. I mean, it's really the history. Oh, I got the chills. Know. That's, that's crazy talk. I love <laughs> then when it, when it taps into local history too. Oh my God. The stuff you can talk about on a multi-generational level you know, you say to the children uh, in the room, oh, well, we didn't have the internet. We had to go to the library and look things up. And they look at you like, what? Were you in the Stone Age? What? <laughs> and they so, don't understand what that was like. That was tedious. It no. took hours just even to find one resource when you no. need to look something Yeah, up. it's, it's, uh, anyway, but I digress. So thank you for asking. I do recommend it. It's a great, a great activity to do with a group of seniors and they all contributed. I mean, it, even people who needed to have um, hearing uh, devices because they were a little hard hearing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can make it as accessible as you need to. It's it's a great thing to do. I also think there's something about putting it up on a big screen, t a big yes. screen um, and makes it feel more important. That's, you know, I never thought of it that way, but that is true. I think what what it gave people the opportunity to do was to kind of, when you pass a photo back and forth, everybody doesn't see it at the same time, you know, so somebody might make a comment. And then by the time you hand it down to, you know, this lady who's over here, the moment's already gone, you know, where mm -hmm. it's, it's like, it reminded me of um, art classes I had in school where people would comment on, on pictures or paintings or things like that. Huh? Yeah. It was just a great, a great, it was a great experience. And I, I literally walked away. I was like, wow, because <laughs> They were just the, the stories, the stories yeah. were incredible, like yours. Amazing. Well, I would love to be, I would love for anybody on this call, if they have any, you know, if they try any of these ideas and you want to get back to us on what it felt like, what the experience was like, I absolutely would love for you guys to share that with us at a future meeting. Um, it would really be exciting because I think it can inspire other people. Um, like your stories just inspired. I, I, you know, I used to consult to long-term care communities back in the day. And I, so that's where a lot of these ideas is ideas that I would share with people as I was consulting. Um, and it was fun to see them play out and, and, you know, just the fun that people could have with it when people start purposefully planning your visits. And I think that's part of the message here. We just kind of go thinking we're just going to go to visit. Um, and, you should try to plan a little bit so that it can, but let it flow as it needs to flow. Um, but just so that it doesn't just become about the ailments all the time, um, because that becomes depressing for everybody. Um, and there is one last thing that I do want to share. It was about the visiting hours. Um, I'm, I wanted to bring that up at the beginning. Um, Long-term care communities are not allowed to ban people from coming to visit whenever they want to come to visit. Now they may post visiting hours, but those visiting hours are just suggestions. So many times you'll see like, you know, eight in the morning till eight at night or something along those regards. 
Um, that doesn't mean that you can't visit before eight or you can't visit after eight. You can. The caveat is, is that you can't disturb any other residents while you're doing your visit. So let's say, for example, I worked the night shift in the hospital. Okay, I was a nurse and worked in the night shift in the hospital. I worked till 11 o'clock at night. So it's difficult for me to go see my mom during the day. But all I want to do is just go and be able to give her a kiss goodnight. I drive right by where she lives, the nursing home that she lives in. So I could do that. I could stop by. Usually there's a, the doors are locked just like they are in your own house at nighttime. So the nursing home would be locked for safety, but there usually is a doorbell and that's connected to the nurse's station. You ring the doorbell and they would let you in and you could go visit with, you could go give your mom the kiss goodnight. You can't turn the lights on and disturb if she has got a roommate. You don't want to do that. Um, if your mother's up, you could go out of the room and you could go visit in a common area if she's a night owl. That's perfectly fine too. Um, so I want to make sure that everybody is aware that just because there may be visiting hours posted doesn't mean that you're confined to those hours, particularly if you're a shift worker. Um, you still can't go see your mom, your dad, your loved one um, whenever you want to do that. And it can just be for that pop-in just to say, Hey, I just got back from shopping and I want to show you the, the cute toy that I got for my grandson, Joe, you know, your great grandson for Christmas. I want to just show it to you real quick, mom. Here, look, isn't this car adorable? Okay. Isn't it cute? I got to get running, but I'm just driving by and I wanted to share it with you and go. So it can be like that too. It doesn't have to be these long drawn out. I've got to stay for two hours and then it becomes tiresome for everybody. And it doesn't make you want to go and it doesn't make the individual want you to come to come to visit either. So think about that. Think about how you can frame these visits so that they become much more meaningful for everybody. Um, with that, it's four o'clock on the dot. So what I'm going to do is I am going to stop the recording for the meeting. Um, if my cursor will allow me to do it. So just thank you everybody for being a part of this meeting today. And I will be staying on after the meeting to be able to do any continued sharing that anybody would like.